Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Sneesby. I'm the Vice President of IPTV and Technology at Integral. Integral is a joint venture between Saudi Telecom, um, Astro Malaysia, which is the largest direct-to-home pay TV provider in the Malaysian region, and the Saudi Research and Marketing Group. Integral was set up as a company specifically to exploit digital content opportunities with operators and for operators in the region. We're not just a company that works uh, in the Saudi marketplace, we're a company that's been set up to work with all operators um, and to ex exploit these digital content opportunities across the web, across mobile and IPTV platforms. So today I'm going to talk very much about uh, Arabic digital content um, and the opportunities to exploit this from an operator perspective and from the perspective of how Integral works with these operators. I want to first start by setting the scene, and that is that the concept um, of creating economic value with content is all about bringing together an audience and bringing together content that meets their needs and their wants. And again, in the context today, I'm going to talk about IPTV, a little bit about mobile um, and the web context, but it's also very relevant in other contexts. And that is whether we're talking about education, bringing education content to an audience of students, or whether it be um, business content or business applications to an audience of business users. In all of these cases, you bring together audience, you bring together the content that meets their needs, and economic value is created. So let's look at this from the perspective of the digital value chain. And this is something that in our current era and that the evolution that's going on at the moment is changing dramatically the way we look at content. Traditional content value chains um, for traditional media no longer make sense anymore because there's a, a number of different steps and a number of different factors that influence us. So let's look at some of those. If we start with content creation, um, adaption and acquisition, the first part of the chain when you think about it from an operator perspective. Um, we're now looking at the challenges of creating unique content which is designed for platforms. And we, you would have all heard about Mobisodes and Webisodes. Um, you'd all be familiar with the challenges of trying to repurpose content so it's available um, on platforms with, which have different shape screens um, and different uh, types of usage for users. On the service delivery side, the, the packaging of content, um, the concept has totally changed. It's no longer about selling newspapers or buying a DVD. It's about video on demand on TV platforms. And how do we package that? Is it, is it purchase per movie? Do we, do we put a subscription package together? How do we price it? How do we bundle it? And then we move down the value chain into the marketing and sales of that content. All of a sudden, operators have different opportunities. Again, it's no longer about a simple purchase of a content asset on its own. It's about bundling content and applications with broadband services on the fixed line, with mobile services and mobile applications on the mobile side of the business. So the concept of marketing and sales completely changes in the new digital value chain. And of course, one thing we're all very familiar with is the network and the distribution side. We have to get this content to the consumers, to the end users, and that presents new challenges both for fixed networks and for mobile networks. If you think about IPTV, um, requiring six megabits to the home for standard definition, 10 for high definition, 3D content requiring even more bandwidth and applications to add on top of that, the challenge starts to grow um, in the network space and in terms of the capacity. And on the mobile side, delivering similar content um, to mobile handsets is also a challenge. And if we move right down to the end of the, the um, spectrum to the end user and how they're consuming that content, I don't need to go through the list of end user devices that are available today from set-top boxes which are developed and distributed by independent manufacturers with proprietary operating systems. Um, TV manufacturers who are also developing connected TVs with their own proprietary operating systems. Um, mobile devices, and, and if I guess we, we think about it from uh, Guy's perspective coming from the Apple world, uh, he would probably solve this problem by making every end user device an Apple device and this would, this would go away, but the reality is the challenge is a lot more significant than that. But it's not all about challenges and difficulties because there are huge amounts of opportunity in the market space and if you look at some basic statistics, um, and there are plenty of these out there to give the same kind of examples, you'll see that in this region there is plenty of opportunity. Um, internet access and broadband penetration, as we've already heard today, is very high in this region compared to other regions. It may not necessarily in some countries be the fastest broadband access, 
but this is an indicator of the thirst for broadband and the thirst for the consumption of content over broadband networks. Google talks about 100 million um, Arab users being on the internet by 2015. And if we look at smartphone penetration, the take up of smartphones um, and the decisions that people are making this year, Nielsen talks about a third of people in the region making a decision to purchase smartphones this year. If we move over to the preference for Arabic content, um, searches on the web give a very good indication of what people are looking for. And if you look across the region, between 50 and 80%, depending on which country you're in, of, of searches are conducted in Arabic. In the Saudi market recently, uh, we launched some new video on demand content and uh, we launched the title with Adil Imam, which was a title called Zahaima um, in the region. And, and when we launched that title, we did some benchmarks against Hollywood content. And Zahaima is a rating um, on our video on demand platform in the Saudi market, outrated the, the latest release Hollywood content by more than four to one. So more than four times the number of viewers of, of uh, audience were consuming this content um, on, our, on our video on demand platform compared to titles like Inception um, out of the Hollywood studios. And then you look across to the number of players in the region who are setting up digital, business focus, digital businesses focused around Arabic content and the early successes that they've had, the indications are all very strong for the region. One question I often get asked, particularly in the IPTV space, um, so I thought I'd address it immediately here today, which is, what about these over-the-top players? What about players like Netflix and Hulu? Are they going to come into the region and just eat our lunch? Are they going to come into the region and distribute their own content um, and take away the market opportunity um, for the localised players? And I'm absolutely certain the answer is no. If I look at these guys and I look at the focus that they have in their businesses, they're businesses that are playing in big global markets and their priority right now is not the Middle East. They have some fundamental challenges um, in operating in this region and I've spoken to a number um, in different aspects and the, the challenge for them of getting hold of good quality Arabic content because of the need to have relationships um, and a direct association with the content providers and producers in the region presents a very difficult challenge for them. On top of that, the need for them to repurpose any Western content that they bring into the region presents an additional cost and an additional barrier to entry for them coming into the market. So we see in a lot of cases that they're hesitating in the market space. Operators in this region already have existing relationships with consumers, already have existing content relationships with consumers, um, and localised players are best placed to exploit content opportunities in this marketplace. I'm going to switch back and just very quickly reflect on the, the value chain again. And if we look at the, the content side of things, particularly in um, the production um, and the adaption and the acquisition side, um, in the operator space, a, a lot of the challenge is there because if you look at the, the uh, Arabic uh, production of content, the producers of content in this region are producing for what is, if you compare to Hollywood, um, a very small market um, within which they have to monetize their content. So you look at the budgets that are available for the production of content and you look at the opportunity to exploit that content. If you then flip over to acquiring content on a global basis and repurposing it for the region, it also presents challenges because of the fragmented market that we have and the need to have a reasonable sized subscriber base in order to monetize your content. So we're working with operators across the region to help them make decisions around when, they, when should they be a business that sponsors content or creates content and when should they be a business that distributes existing content that's out there. On the service delivery side, particularly if we look at the cost of infrastructure, and I use IPTV as the example, but it equally applies across mobile platforms and other digital platforms, the cost of technology infrastructure to deliver this content is very high. There are opportunities in the region for operators to work with aggregators and to work in partnership. Um, a lot of opportunity to work in partnership in terms of sharing some of this cost. And if you think about in the traditional network space where operators have, have mostly been, um, there are already very strong models where operators are sharing the cost, the capital investment of network um, infrastructure. Equally, in the content space, whether it be through acquisition or the platform deliveries, there is opportunity for operators in this region to partner up together in order to make sure that they can maximise their return on investments in content. And of course, on the marketing and sales side, there is a specific need and a specific content marketing and sales talent that needs to be brought into the region. The opportunity there is to be able to develop our talent here 
and grow the marketing and sales capability so that we can exploit those content opportunities. So I'd just like to, uh, to close out and probably reflect from some of my earlier days at Microsoft. I used to get um, the opportunity to listen to Steve Barmer talk a lot, particularly in the, the company get-togethers in, in the US. And uh, for those of you who've seen him on YouTube, he used to consistently tout about developers, developers, developers. At Microsoft, whenever they had a challenge, the problem could be solved with throwing developers, developers, developers at it. Here in the region, the, the challenge that we have and the opportunity is both a lot more complicated and very significant. We all have a role as part of this industry to both contribute to that, but at the same time, we have a huge opportunity to exploit that both socially, um, economically, and commercially. Thank you for your time.